So this problem is kind of the Rosetta Stone for graphing. Uh, if we can figure out how to do this type of problem, um, then we actually are going to be able to do a lot uh, in the rest of the, the graphing topics as well. So we're given a line. We have to come up with an equation for this line. Uh, so what are the two pieces of data, two pieces of information that we need to know uh, in order to determine an equation for a line? We need to know the slope, and we need to know the y-intercept. And strategically, the slope is almost always the first thing we try to find. Um, because we have enough information given to us in the form of this graph to determine what is the slope of the line that joins these two points. The y-intercept tends to be the last thing we find. Um, once we've set up absolutely everything else, once we know what the slope is, um, then we're going to use that slope in order to find the y-intercept. Uh, and then how do that slope and y-intercept come together in an equation? What uh, equation template do we tend to use for finding equations for lines? Yeah. You'll notice that in this multiple choice question, um, all of the multiple choice answer choices take that form, right? These all come in that slope intercept uh, format. Um, so one of the nice things about multiple choice in this type of problem uh, is that once we find the slope, we might be able to rule out some of these answer choices right away. So let's do that step first. Um, between these two red labeled points, how do I find the slope of this line? Yeah, the rise over the run. So. My rise is this amount over here. So for that, I need to subtract the y-coordinates of these two points. And those y-coordinates are 6 and 3, respectively, right? Um, the other way to do this, the more conventional way, I suppose, would be to just label the coordinates of these points. So the y-coordinates of these points are 6 and 3. So that when I find the rise, I'm just going to subtract the 6 minus the 3. So my rise is going to be 3. What about my run? What's the x-coordinate of this point? x-coordinate's 1. And the x-coordinate of this one is negative 4. And so when we compute the run, we have to, again, remember to subtract in the same order that we did for the rise. So here we did this point minus that point. So in the same order, we'll do this x-coordinate minus that x-coordinate, 1 minus negative 4. And here's a perfect place to make a sign error. 1 minus negative 4 is the same as 1 plus positive 4, and so that's 5. And so what, therefore, is the slope of this line? 3 over 5, that rise over that run. And we can check our answer for plausibility by noting that this slope is a positive number. And how is that shown up on the graph? How would we know from the graph that the slope is going to be a positive number? Yeah, because it's increasing from left to right. Exactly. Uh, and again, that's an observation you want to hang on to for pre-calculus, but also in calculus. That takes on a special new meaning. So increasing graphs have positive slopes. And what's great about it in a multiple choice environment is now we can look at a bunch of the answer choices and say, no way. Like answer choice C. What is the slope of the line on answer choice C? Negative 3 fifths. And so right away, we know that choice C is out. Ditto for choices D and E. So away goes choice D because its slope was 5 thirds. Same thing with choice E. Its slope was 5 thirds. So right away, we're now down to just a choice between door number 1 and door number 2, A and B. So it's going to hinge now on the y-intercept. Let's take a quick look at the graph. About what would we expect the y-intercept to be for this graph? So somewhere around 6. So 6 is right here on the y-axis. Uh, 5 is right there. So it looks from the graph like the y-intercept is somewhere in between 5 and 6. So faced with a choice between these two answers, which one do we think is more likely? Well, if it were exactly 6, then the line wouldn't be passing right through that point. So, yeah, it's a fraction, right? It's, it's, it's not a whole number. Our slope, our, our y-intercept here is not a whole number. So probably answer choice B is the right one. Um, but let's make sure that if this kind of problem shows up not on uh, multiple choice, where we actually had ways of ruling out incorrect choices, but if this showed up on an open response, let's go back through the process and make sure that we've got that working for us too. So what would we typically do? 
in this situation if we wanted to know what the y-intercept is without having some multiple choices at our disposal? Well, typically, we would just call the y-intercept something b and then use this equation along with the coordinates of one of our points to plug in for x and y and then solve that equation to discover b. And we can use either of our two points as long as the slope we found is correct. So I'm going to use the one that doesn't have any negatives, just because it feels easier. Um, so if I put in this point, a 1 for x and a 6 for y, then I'm going to end up with something that looks like this. 6 equals 3 fifths times 1 plus b. And now all we have to do is solve this equation for b. Well, 3 fifths times 1 is just 3 fifths. That's what happens when you multiply something by 1. Um, so all we need to do to finish solving is to subtract 3 fifths from both sides. And that leaves us with a simple, well, a quick at least, fraction subtraction. This is 6 over 1. We can bring everything up to 5 through so our common denominator. Uh, I've got 3 fifths from over here. How many fifths is 6 over 1? 30. And then to subtract these two fractions, we'll subtract across the numerators. 30 minus 3 gives me 27. And my denominator, I keep, which is 5. And sure enough, the y-intercept of this line was 27 over 5. Validating answer choice B.